Fellas, today we are looking at the 7th Seraph Officer Revolver. This is a 180 round per minute hand cannon, which really opens up Pandora's box because I am a huge fan of 180s. No, they don't necessarily have the best time to kill, but they are some of the best dueling weapons in the game. We're gonna be going over this hand cannon though, how it performs in both PvP and PvE, how it compares against other 180s like Optative and Service Revolver, and why I think this is a hand cannon you absolutely need need to lock down before this season is over. So first up, to even get this weapon, again, you can go into any Rasputin bunker, pick up bounties for these weapons, and I think on occasion, depending on how high you got ranked up in the season pass, you can just outright purchase the officer revolver if it happens to be rotating at one of the bunkers. This refreshes daily. I'm not even sure, though, if officer revolver is in that rotation, but you can definitely lock it down with some bounties. Now, the roles that we're going to be going over today, big shout out to Archangel, as well as apex here as i was trying to track down some very unique roles and these guys happen to have it so role number one this one was definitely a little more gauged at pvp it came with small bore for that increase in range and stability flare and magwell which was not necessarily the most ideal trade here but it does increase that reload speed as well as our stability which is kind of needed with this role right here now the first trait is firmly planted increase in accuracy stability and handling when firing while crouch mother of god this is such a great trait, but especially on a 180 round per minute hand cannon. You go into crouch mode and those shots get super sticky. On top of that, the things like increased stability and handling, which is something these 180s desperately need, at least in the handling department, is greatly appreciated. And a lot of times, I wouldn't even intentionally proc firmly plant it. I would just kind of slide in and firmly would be proc'd and shabam, I'm getting all these benefits right here. Now the final trait is multi-kill clip. Reloading grants increased damage based on the number of rapid kills made beforehand now inside of pvp you're not necessarily going to be walking around with multi-kill clip times two or even times three granted multi-kill clip does surpass that of kill clip in terms of damage times two is 33 percent damage and at times three it's 50 percent damage whereas kill clip is only 33 percent however for the most part you'll be sitting comfortably at only times one basic multi-kill clip being procced that is only a 17 percent increase here in damage surprisingly enough though it's it's plenty for our Seraph Revolver here, essentially allowing this weapon to get the three tap at 67 per crit. It also elevates that body shot damage to 45 damage per body. Now the three tap is what really gives 180's value. I mean, when we talk about time to kill for the most part, one second is optimal for a 180 round per minute hand cannon. Where it elevates itself though, is with things like kill clip, or in this case, multi-kill clip, allowing it to three tap, drops this weapon's time to kill to 0.67 seconds. Now we're optative and service revolver have Sarah's revolver here beat is the fact that that kill clip trait tax on 33% more damage instead of 17%. Meaning in those situations where damage fall off is occurring, you can still normally secure a three tap simply because you have more damage per bullet due to kill clip. Now there are some advantages to multi-kill clip that I don't want us to look over. Number one, you don't have to time the proc. You ever have those moments when you're in a duel, you get a kill, you proc kill clip, and then you immediately get another kill right after that? Sometimes when you reload right after that kill, kill clip doesn't proc, right? It's like the timing is off and kill clip kind of makes you be aware, at least consciously, of when you actually reload. Multi-kill clip kind of alleviates that, right? You could just chain kill after kill, reload into reload, and it constantly keeps procking on itself it doesn't require you to let multi-kill clip run out in order to reproc it you just get a kill reload get another kill and reload again so there's a lot more ease of use in my eyes with multi-kill clip but does it make up for the less damage first up this is when i really want to just dive into seraph revolver and talk about some intangibles here seraph is a fantastic feeling 180 i would say for the most part most 180s especially optative have that feel of being a 180 they're also kind of bulky right especially in the recoil department the way it throws up in front of your screen can be somewhat obtrusive and i would say for the most part 180s all of them due to that precision intrinsic perk and just its vertical recoil pattern have that same characteristic serif revolver is a little different right it just doesn't feel nearly as bulky as some of our other 180s and honestly just based off of that i find it to be one of the better feeling 180s in the game now when we actually sit down and do a stack comparison though 
Serif does come up short in a lot of categories. It has less range than both service and optative, less stability than optative, slightly better handling, but a little less in service, less reload speed than optative. It does boast an extra plus one in aim assist, but outside of that, guys, stat wise, optative is superior. Not only that, everything about optative, especially, is designed more for PvP. Rapid hit, kill clip, good range. And you kind of get the same thing out of service revolver, too. You can roll those same exact perks and maybe even better ones with things like moving target rangefinder some people have even just worked around having that lack of reload and just went with rangefinder kill clip both of those weapons are definitely more designed for pvp in comparison to our serif revolver so what is the purpose of serif and by the way i'm not crapping on this hand cannon because i really did enjoy using it inside of pvp but i always like to find where a weapon is supposed to thrive the most at turns out it's in this other role right here this role which i originally went into this looking for another pvp role turned out to be why you should lock down this hand cannon before the season is over it came with small bore a pendant mag firmly planted as well and timed payload now timed payload been a minute since we actually review that trait right states that the projectiles attach to enemies and explode after a short delay essentially explosive payload but it's got a time delay on it what's so beautiful about timed payload as well as explosive payload as discovered here recently i think cheese forever may have discovered it first i'm not sure maybe someone else but when combined with say something like overload rounds all the inconsistencies that's ever come with its stunning overload champions has now been fixed essentially landing consecutive hits on an enemy target causes that disruption delaying ability energy regeneration and lowering combatant damage output what the game thinks when you have time payload or explosive payload they register your shot as two you shoot once it tags them twice thus resulting in that disruption occurring every single time you ever had those situations where you sit back and you're shooting every single shot in your magazine trying to stun an overload champion and they just keep charging you down time payload and explosive payload completely fix that and i'm pretty sure explosive payload does it too this is my only experience with it so far and this is time payload regardless though that is a major benefit here now of course you can land other hand cannons with time payload or even explosive rounds true prophecy better devils hell even trust rolls with explosive rounds i think the only benefit that seventh has over those other weapons is that it's a rasputin based weapon and again these weapons have the potential to spawn those war mind cells and we've made a couple of builds based around war mind cells and they're nasty extremely and will continue to be nasty in the future the problem is is there's not like a lot of pve content right now outside of like grandmaster nightfalls that you're actively taking advantage of war mind cell builds and even then there's still a large amount of people that are ignoring war mind cells and what it has to offer that's probably the biggest benefit that seven seraph has at least going forward into the future now as far as the best roles because these are the random roles that you can get on this weapon i did try time payload inside of pvp with that firmly planted trait and i will say it wasn't bad but i still find that you need a damage dealing perk you need at least multi kill clip if not kill clip on a 180 to allow this weapon type to thrive inside of crucible i do think firmly planted though is a must-have fantastic you might want to even combine it more so with like accurized rounds a range boosting perk and maybe rock enhanced hand cannon loaders for that proc for multi kill clip vorpal is another trade on this weapon which means it will be doing extra damage against champions extremely nice and i would say vorpal would be a great option if you aren't utilizing this weapon for its stun capabilities with time payload but this is a little 180 so even though vorpal does give you that increase there in damage against champions i would much rather use its utility and its stunning capabilities with time payload versus trying to load this weapon out in damage and i mean if we're trying to really look at a 180 that's optimal inside a pve look no further than trust i mean really really guys trust is a fantastic weapon for pve if you're looking for a very solid 180 things like dragonfly rampage together that's just one trait combination of many that to me makes it a little more of a valuable option inside a pve and of course you can farm for trust again the selling point to seraph is the ability to stun targets with time payload while simultaneously spawning war mine cells when landing kills so guys that is our review there for seraph revolver get your hands on it we've got about a week left what no a week and a half we're approaching the end of the season fellas so you might want to lock it down now either way it goes it's a good hand cannon it has potential
potential and a slight niche. So try it out for yourselves. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.